Welcome back to Anderson Acres. We're in the kitchen today and someone had asked me if I could show them how to use a bread maker. So it turns out a lot of people do get secondhand bread makers or they get bread makers that didn't come with a manual so they're not 100% sure what to do, what order to add the ingredients. So I'm just going to do two videos, one of them about the bread pan and loading your ingredients and then one of them about using the actual bread maker that I'm going to post just walking you through the basics of using a bread maker. So Every bread maker is a little bit different, but there are absolutely some basics. First is they all come with a bread pan. It might be a bread pan like this, that is a taller one, or it might be a more horizontal bread pan. I've had both. There's not a lot of difference between them. The horizontal ones typically have two paddles. This one only has one paddle down in the middle. Okay, so it only has one paddle that came with it. The horizontal ones will have two paddles at the same time, spinning and mixing your loaves. It really isn't a difference in the quality, it's really just a preference. So do you like the double or do you like the stand-up one? I like this kind better, but it doesn't really make a difference in terms of quality. I just like that these take up less space on the countertop. So your bread pan will be non-stick, okay? All bread pans from all manufacturers are non-stick these days. That's really important because otherwise you'd never get your bread out. Because of the nature of bread makers, it's impossible to grease your pan. So you have to put all your ingredients in and let the machine do its work. So if you bake in your bread pan, which I don't do a lot, but you can, and when you do that, if you don't have non-stick, your bread's just gonna stick and it's gonna be really annoying. So they are all non-stick. They all come with a paddle. Now mine comes with one paddle. If you have a double bread maker or the horizontal ones, you will have two paddles. Mine only has one. These paddles are really easy to insert and they are also non-stick. So inside your bread maker, deep down in the middle, is a little post. This goes on the post. Mine is a D, so there's a straight side and then the rest is round. You may have one with two straight sides and two rounded sides. So it doesn't really matter as long as you use the paddle that came with your bread maker, it fits. So you just fit it in the way it fits. Okay, everyone will be a slightly different. Sometimes you can use bread paddles from old machines in your new machine. Sometimes you can't because they have a different configuration. So you put that in. All of your bread pans will also have a handle. This is important. We'll talk later about never touching this handle after a bake without using an oven mitt. Believe me, I've done that. I'll mention that again later. So your bread pan, your paddle is in the middle. The bottom of your pan should look something like that. Okay, it's not a complicated pan. It's just a spinning mechanism that your bread pan locks into your bread maker and it just spins your paddle in a set rotation. So now you have to add your ingredients. Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention about your bread pan. Do not put this in the dishwasher. This mechanism down here has a bunch of seals to keep water from leaking out because you put water on the bottom. If you put this in the dishwasher, the rubber seal in here can slowly break down over time. If you want to expand the life of your bread pan, hand wash this. It says it can go in the dishwasher. It'll It'll make your bread pan leak eventually. So I recommend hand washing these. Anyway, now we have to add our ingredients if we're going to bake bread. The way you do this is liquids on the bottom and then your flour and then your yeast. So in your liquids, you can put things like your salts, your sugars, any spices you're adding to your bread. Sometimes you can do a cheese. I prefer to do cheese on top of the flour most of the time, especially if you're using the timer function. So I'm going to put in my sugar or your honey. I don't need to tell you how much. This is just a basic white. I can link to that recipe. I'm not going to tell you the amounts. It doesn't matter. This is just how to use your bread maker. So those are, that's our sugar or your honey, your salts, your butter, margarine, or oil. And then you want to put your water in. <clears throat> Excuse me. On top, you can add any spices as well. I'm not doing any spices. I'm just doing a basic white. So you could add spices in there if you like. Do not add a harder cheese to your water. You want to put that on top. So if you're doing a cheese loaf, you would want to put that on your flour. So then you add your flour. Here is where you would add a cheese. If you were adding cheddar cheese or something, give this a shake to flatten that out. You want your flour completely covering your water because next goes your yeast. You want to use a bread machine or a quick rise yeast. Don't use traditional yeast. It doesn't break down fast enough for the bread maker because you're not pre-dissolving. 
So you just put your yeast on top of the flour. Make sure your yeast doesn't touch the water. That's why we flattened out the flour. What you want to do now is get this into your bread maker. You can have a timer function. Most of your bread makers do come with a timer function. What you do not want to do is use milk or eggs if you're using the timer function. So I didn't use milk or eggs in here anyway. But if you were going to use milk or eggs, you can't use the timer function on your machine. I'm going to mention that again in the next video, just because it's actually really important because they can spoil if left for 10 hours at room temperature, your bread could end up spoiled. So don't use uh, ingredients that will expire overnight if you're doing a timer function. Also, you'll notice I, I'm just doing a basic white, so I don't have any nuts or seeds or berries in here. But if I was making, for example, a cinnamon raisin, you would also need raisins in here. You don't add them now. If your bread maker has a fruit and nut dispenser, you use that. If your bread maker has a buzzer that goes off to tell you to add fruits and nuts, you would use that. Either way, don't put fruit and nuts in here. It doesn't go well. It just ends up chopped up in the bread maker. So we are going to come back in a few minutes. And you'll, for you, it'll be a couple of days because I'm not posting the videos back to back. But we are going to come back and I'll show you how to actually use the bread maker now that you've loaded your bread pan.